Hi, I'm Michelle the Irritable Vegan and today's recipe is all about beautiful beet balls. Rich and earthy with a meaty texture. These are a fabulous vegan low FODMAP alternative to meatballs or burgers. This recipe serves four with either six beet balls or one beet patty per portion. They freeze really well so are a great meal prep recipe to make in bulk. I'm serving mine with a simple tomato rice and creamy yoghurt and dill dressing. I hope you enjoy it. We'll begin by draining 300 grams of pickled beetroot and rinsing thoroughly under cold running water. We're using pickled beetroot as it's listed in the Monash app as FODMAP free and has a generous serving size of 75 grams. And don't worry, I'll be showing you how to get rid of any excess acidity. Dice the rinsed beetroot into medium chunks. To give you an idea, these were baby beets and I cut them into quarters. Put the diced beets into a bowl then sprinkle over one heaped teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda to neutralise the acid. Cover the beets with cold water and leave to sit for 30 minutes. You can do this part ahead of time if you prefer. After 30 minutes drain off the soaking water and vigorously rinse the beets then set aside to drain thoroughly. Into a food processor add 300 grams of rinsed and drained canned mushrooms. Blitz these up roughly into small chunks. To the chopped mushrooms add 160 grams of roast chestnuts and pulse again to break down the nuts into small chunks. If you've got a regular blender like me, you'll probably need to scrape the sides down a couple of times. To the processor add the drained beets and 160 grams of rinsed, drained, canned black beans. Add to this one heaped tablespoon of Vegemite, one teaspoon of mixed Italian dried herbs, one teaspoon of ground cumin, salt and pepper. Blitz everything together until a coarse ruby red pate is formed. You'll likely need to scrape down the side several times to make sure everything is fully combined. You're looking for the whole mixture to be a deep red with no brown areas left unmixed and no visible identifiable chunks of any one ingredient. At this point, test and adjust the flavourings. I added an extra half a tablespoon of Vegemite and black pepper. You could also add tomato puree, smoked paprika and Dijon mustard, depending on your taste. Split the mixture into four equal portions, then form each portion into six beet balls or one large beet patty. The balls are very soft, so you'll need to handle them with care. They do firm up slightly as they cook, but will still remain moist and juicy, which is exactly what we want. Shape them lightly between your hands before using a tablespoon to transfer them onto a parchment covered baking tray. Spread them evenly across the tray with room around each so that you'll be able to turn them with tongs during cooking. The trick to shaping these is to keep your hands and the tablespoon wet but not dripping. Dip the tablespoon into warm water before scooping up a generous heaped tablespoon of the mixture. Shape the mixture lightly into a ball between wet hands. Try not to overly handle the mix before plopping it back onto the spoon, remembering to wash and wet the spoon between each scoop. Then you can start to reshape the ball onto the spoon. This type of deep measuring tablespoon works best for this and helps to form the mixture into a nice round shape. Once you're happy with the shape, quickly plop the beet ball onto the parchment lined baking tray. Continue to do this until you've used up all of the mixture. Each ball should be roughly the size of a small falafel, making approximately 24 balls. Line them up in four rows of six balls in each row. Then pop them into the oven for 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius, whilst you get on with the rice. For the rice, you'll need 250 grams or one and a quarter cups of dried long grain rice. I use white rice, so cooking times may vary for other varieties. To a heavy bottomed pot add 1 tablespoon of olive oil and 1 tablespoon of garlic oil over a high heat. Pour over the dried rice and stir briskly to coat each grain in the hot oil. Pour in 500ml or 2 cups of boiling water and add a pinch of salt. Give a light stir before covering with a well fitting lid, reducing the heat to minimum and set a timer for 15 minutes. After 20 minutes remove the tray from the oven and carefully turn over each beet ball. Use a very light touch to avoid squishing them and gently pat each ball with wet fingers to reshape it if needed. Once they're all turned, pop the tray back in the oven for a further 15 minutes. 
When your 15 minute timer goes off, turn off the rice and without stirring, add 400 grams of finely diced fresh common tomatoes and two tablespoons of chopped fresh sage and thyme. Cover the pot with a clean tea towel, remove from the heat and leave for 12 minutes. Whilst the rice sits, add one cup of coconut yogurt to a bowl. Sprinkle in one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of dried dill and squeeze over the juice of half a lime. Whisk this together until the nooch melts into the yoghurt. Test and add in salt to taste. After 12 minutes, remove the tea towel and carefully fold the tomatoes and herbs into the rice, fluffing everything up with a fork. Serve the rice garnished with spring onion greens and I like to add fresh cucumbers on the side. These beet balls have a moorish, savoury flavour and a succulent texture. They don't dry out or crumble like many meatball substitute recipes I've tried in the past. The rice is equally delicious plain without the tomatoes, which would make this dish an option for my nightshade free friends. You'll never guess that we use pickled beetroot as the base for this recipe, so make a note of my top tip for neutralising the acid and let me know if you use it in some of your future recipes. Serve the beet balls with a generous dollop of the yoghurt and dill dressing. This is one of my favourite go-to creamy dressings and it works well on everything from baked potatoes to vegan Caesar salad. If you're making these ahead of time, you can freeze them portioned in batches once they're cooked and cooled. They'll last well for a couple of months in a sealed container in the freezer. Please let me know if you plan on giving this recipe a try and tag me over on Instagram at The Irritable Vegan with all your recipe recreations. Don't forget if you're looking for more comfort food recipes like these, that Feast Without FODMAPs is out now. Until next time, thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye! The balls are really soft so you'll need to handle them with care. They do firm up slightly as they cook but still remain... <laughs> the balls are really soft so you'll need to handle them. What she said. Okay. <clears throat> Shape the balls lightly between your hands. <laughs> Stop it. <clears throat>